to go. I'm recording now in five, four, seven, three, two, alpha, beta, world's dumbest t-shirt. I don't know. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Breaking the Fourth Wall After Hours Edition, the show where everything is made up and we really don't give a shit. I am your host, Mr. Christopher Stolle, and with me, as always, is a panel of my a a lister panelists, but they come from the Z list next door. First and foremost, that hostess with the mostest from the uh, that trans geek girl show that can be seen right here on Realm of the Mist Entertainment, Miss Christina Talley. How y'all doing? He hasn't been seen in a while because he hasn't had anything to rant about, but maybe we'll get him to sound off today, Mr. Eric Batista Sr. It's actually throwing me off that he actually has a headset on. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the founding father of War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. The man who sadly actually believes the Chicago Bears may actually do something within his lifetime. Mr. John Mark Tully. We still have a better chance than the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm wearing an Eagles hat. He had his chance to get even, like enjoy that loss you're going to get Sunday. But you know, he he, he was fair about it. Well, you did have the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> well, yeah, but you see, the thing the thing is, is that it's more impressive that Back to the Future Two was only off by a year. This is true. <laughs> I agree. Although I'm still waiting for the holographic Jaws 19. Yes. <laughs> the shark still looks fake. All right, so. <laughs> What? Yes, it can. Jaws of Revenge. Uh, no, at least, at least the shark moved in Jaws of Revenge. Because let's not forget that one scene in Jaws 3 where they're sitting in an underwater like building and the shark's humming at the glass and it's not even moving except for the mouth just going. I like Jaws 3. Jaws 3 made me watch Inner Space because I liked Dennis Quaid. Interspace was an awesome movie. Right, but remember, when Dinner Space came out, Jaws 3 was like one of the first movies you saw Dennis Quaid in. At least one of the first movies I ever saw him in. And I liked him as an actor enough that when it's like, Martin Short and Dennis Quaid in Inner Space, I'm like, I'll check this movie out. Which, thank you, Jaws 3, for making me check out Inner Space. <laughs> Save my ass, by injecting me into yours. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Uh, this is the first uh, chance we've had with a lot of the panelists here uh, since the beginning of the new year. So, first off, off the bat, how was everybody's new year and holidays? Good, good. We ain't complaining. complaining. Riveting stories here, guys. All right. <laughs> All right, I'll start off with uh, the first bit of news that we could talk about. Uh, they have announced that they are doing a what I assume is a autobiographical biography pick of the late Mr. Rogers. So, yes, we are getting a Mr. Rogers movie starring, as latestly reported today, Mr. Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers. Who's excited for it? Uh, I, I know it's my rejoicing. rejoicing. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I would say I'm excited. I mean, it depends on how they do it. As a serious, like, not like, oh, we're going to do crap all over the legacy of Mr. Rogers and make this a joke. I think <coughs> the fact that they're that they're, they've cast Hanks in the role leads me to believe that they're doing this as a serious biographical pick. They're not going to do like they did with, you know, um, uh, Dukes of Hazard or Star Trek Hutch or something like that, where they just 
they mock it and make fun of it and, you know, that this is going to be, yeah, that they're going to make this a serious, you know, this is about his life. So I'm not something that's, it's not necessarily something that I'm like, woo, but as someone who grew up as a kid watching Mr. Rogers and, you know, who my daughter is, who also watches Mr. Rogers and stuff from the Fred Rogers collection, um, it's, it's something, something that, that I wouldn't say interests me, but I can see it being halfway, I mean, at least from a cinematic viewpoint, interesting. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Eric, we're talking about uh, as long as they don't make a joke out of it and uh, keep keep true to the uh, character of Mr. Rogers and, of course, Fred Rogers' career. Do you think this has a chance of being better than the chips? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I had to go. To, he blame blame John. He brought it up. He brought it up about this. Um, the you know not taking not taking reboots and stuff seriously. I agree with John as far as the music trying to get remake and reboot. Like I said, uh, I like Tom Hanks as an actor, and I think he could probably pull the role off as Mr. Mister Roger. Cause he'll take it seriously. Yeah. Okay. You know, he's, any role that he's taken, that he's ever done, I think he takes it very seriously. I meant that uh, this last project movie that he did, I liked it. It was pretty good. So, yeah, I think he can pull it off. Okay. As long as you're not traveling with Tom Hanks, I think you're fine. I was about to say, Christina, do you think they'll take some creative license in there and have Mr. Rogers sitting there instead of in the land of make believe talking to... Uh, the king and all that, that maybe he'll be talking to a Wilson volleyball. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, I really hope, because this is a part of a lot of our childhood, in all seriousness. Mr. Rogers, we, everyone on this panel grew up with Mr. Rogers. Well, remember, hi, neighbor. You know, the whole scene where he'd come in, take his shoes off, and then put the sweater on, and put his, put his slippers on, and take us to the land of make-believe. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's part of our childhood. That's part of what we grew up with. And if they crap all over that, then I'm going to be furious. Yeah. Well, but see, it's, it's, it, this kind of ranks with, like, Han Solo for me. And I'll explain what I mean. I expect it to be a good movie because it's a Tom Hanks film. And regardless of what you think of Tom Hanks as, like, a person, I've heard he's the nicest person on the planet. I don't know. But you cannot deny that Tom Hanks is a phenomenal actor. Oh, he definitely is. And almost everything that he touches is gold. If he could turn a piece of shit movie like Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio into a masterpiece, Tom Hanks can pretty much do anything. Um, Speaking about Tom Hanks, did you ever see the pictures that circulated around on social media like a few years ago about the guy who passed out at the bar and Tom Hanks was at the same bar, found the guy who passed out. Took his phone, took selfies on his phone and put his phone back in his pocket. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so the guy wakes up, imagine looking at your phone after you realize you passed out at the bar and then seeing pictures of Tom Hanks with your phone, with you passed out on the bar going. <laughs> so, so um, uh, uh, whether it's a, whether it's a, like a kid's movie, like a, like a full length feature of, of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, or if it's an actual story of the life of, of Fred Rogers, I have faith that this is going to be a decent film because it has Tom Hanks in it, and Tom Hanks won't do a bad film. He's just, he's incapable of doing it. However, why do I compare it to, like, Solo, a Star Wars story? It's going to be a story I never asked for. I'm not excited for it because, like you said, I, I did grow up with Mr. Rogers, but I also grew up with Mr. No, uh, Captain Noah and his magical arc. I grew up with Pinwheel and Sesame Street. I don't need those movies either. Send your pictures to Daryl Captain Noah. Exactly. I, 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 don't, I, don't need, I don't need to grow up. I, or not grow up. I am growing up. I don't need to grow up. Eh, I don't but, need physically. No, I'm growing out. That's the problem. <laughs> You're just getting lazy. That's all that is. And, hey, I'm in shape. Rounds of shape. I'm going to guess you have a six-pack, but the pig not hiding it, right? No, 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 no. I had a six-pack. Now I have a quarter pig. 
<laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a movie that's going to do well because it's Tom Hanks. It's going to be done well because it's a Tom Hanks film. Just like Holo, Solo a Star Wars Story is, is a Star Wars movie. It's going to do well because it's a Star Wars movie. But it's not necessarily a movie that I needed to have happen. I think the major difference between Mr. Rogers and Star and Solo is I'll actually go see Solo. I'll probably wait for it to be rent rentable to see Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. but speaking of Star Wars story, we're going to go into a little speculation. I figure we could be probably quick about this. Solo, we haven't seen a poster, a teaser. Anything outside of a, a very short synopsis, which told us absolutely nothing about the film. Guys, we're getting closer to May here. Do you think we're going to be hearing an announcement here pretty soon that uh, Star Wars, Solo, a Star Wars story is getting pushed back to December? Or as we talked about before off camera, do you think they're saving it for maybe a surprise teaser on Super Bowl Sunday? I think it's a surprise teaser on Super Bowl Sunday. I think it's because I've actually seen the posters at movie theaters and they have the... They don't have any graphics, it's just the uh, Solo, A Star Wars Story, uh, and it has the date on the bottom. Um, but that, I mean, that really doesn't mean anything, but I agree with Christina. I think they're going to do the half uh, the Super Bowl Sunday teaser, at least a teaser in Super Bowl Sunday. Um, you know, and I, I don't know, I mean, personally, I think this whole, we can get into the whole thing of, of uh, whiny fans and everything like that, but <laughs> as I said in one comment, you know, someone made the comment of, we need a trailer, we need a trailer, we demand a trailer, and I commented, we don't need anything. Why are we demanding a trailer? You know, why are we saying, we need a trailer, we need a trailer. Now, we need a trailer now. No. Would I like a trailer? Yes. That would be cool. That would be awesome. But we don't need a trailer. The, you know, Yep. And we lost Mark. Yeah, we lost him for a minute. We didn't hear that last part. All right. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Oh. I was basically just saying how Disney doesn't have to bow to the whim of everything that we say or that we want or demand. That, you know, when Disney's and Lucasfilm is ready to release the trailer, they'll release the trailer. And if for whatever reason they do push it back, we you know, we just have to assume that there's a reason for it and that the reason will be that we'll get a better film than we would have gotten uh, beforehand. It just all depends if um, they can fix the mistakes that were made previously. Well, a perfect example would be uh, Rogue One. Uh, Rogue One got pushed back and had to go through a, a massive amount of reshoots. Everybody was all scared out of their minds. That it's, you know, it's a bad film. Gareth Edwards made a bad film and Rogue One turned out to be phenomenal. And that the, chain, the, the reshoots that they had to do, which, by the way, all movies have reshoots. It, it's almost mandatory. You know, um, it turned out to be a phenomenal film. So if Han Solo did get pushed back or, or needed to do reshoots or something of that nature, it doesn't necessarily mean a bad film. To touch up real quick on what, Mark, uh, what, what John said about, like, we don't need a trailer. In this particular case especially, he's absolutely right. It's a Star Wars movie. I don't care if it's an anthology or a saga. It's a Star Wars movie. All you have to say is a Star Wars movie is coming out Friday, and people will be in line to see it. It's freaking oh, yeah. Star Wars. Exactly. It, 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 will, it will sell tickets. Butts will be in the seats because it's Star Wars. We don't need to see a damn thing about it, and we will be in the theater seeing it opening night. It'd be nice to have a trailer, and I think they should start on their uh, on their merchandising and 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 uh, uh, advertising of it soon. However, if they chose to not advertise this movie at all, it will still make money. Now, do you think that the fact that it's coming out that if they do move it back, that it could move it back further, that it could be? Because it's coming out the same month that Infinity War comes out. And Infinity War comes out at the beginning of that month, and Solo is supposed to come out at the end of that month. Do you think that that the, the reason why there's speculation it could be moved back is because of that? That they want to get all of 
Because, I mean, by even by that time, there's still going to be a lot of people that are going to go see Infinity Wars. And you think that having them that close together was a, maybe a bad idea, now they're kind of rethinking, like, okay, maybe we need to push this back further so it's not... Well, it's... I, I will say this much. Is I, I think Infinity War comes out first. Yes, Infinity War does. Okay. It comes out at the beginning of May. Infinity and War... Solo comes out in the end of May. Infinity War is going to be a beast. There, there's just no two ways about it. Infinity War is going to be a beast. It's going to be the top top movie of the summer. Mm-hmm. That includes Solo coming out with it. Um, if they leave it in place... Solo will be the number two movie next to Infinity War being number one. That's my prediction. Now, if we were talking about like episode eight coming out at the same time as as uh, Infinity War and taking into consideration, I know there's a lot of haters of episode eight, but before everybody saw the movie, everybody was excited for the movie. Yes, yes. Okay, so follow. I do too. I do too, but I'm talking about the idiots that don't. <clears throat> yes, I called you idiots because you are. The plain, and sim- the plain and simple fact is, before anybody knew they liked or disliked Episode Eight, when it was announced that Episode Eight was happening, if it was releasing the same time as Infinity War, I would say there would be a fight for the top spot. Solo, on the other hand, just on the premise that one, it's a like, like I said earlier, it's a movie nobody really asked for. We don't really need a backstory on Han Solo. Two, the Lord and Miller thing, you know, kind of ruined it for everybody, you know, and now. Nobody has had any advertising or anything. These are the negatives to Solo. That if they're looking to dominate May, you leave it there. But if you want Solo to actually have legs and walk, you move it to December. Because it's not going to stand to an Infinity War. Yeah. Eric, what do you feel? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, you're going to have a top movie. And you bring up the solo project. I think one movie is going to do more, make more money than the other one. I think we can let the other one come out, let it go a couple months, then bring solo. Because you know, after three months, pretty much the majority of the people have seen it. You know? I mean, that's an intersecting fan base too. If you think right. about it, because yeah. people who like Marvel. But like people who like Star Wars generally like Marvel, DC, stuff like that as well. So it's going to be a conflicting of interest as well. Yeah. I can tell right now, I mean, the Infinity War, uh, what I was reading, uh, it's going to be off the charts. Yeah. I, I, I can't make, I don't care, I'm paying $25 to see an IMAX 3D, and I don't care if it's $25, I'm going. So... I, what movie theater are you going to? The twenty five dollars for IMAX? <laughs> oh wow! Oh yeah. Listen, a child now is ten dollars at the salmon. God damn! Wow. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 I paid twenty. I paid twenty five dollars for two D regular screening of Last Jedi. God, <laughs> really? How much? Twenty five dollars? Yeah. They wanted to charge. They wanted me to get in the uh, the. They were trying to push me on the uh, the 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 fan screening, which was like forty five dollars per ticket. And all I got special out of it is I got to see it on IMAX screen, not three D. I got to see it on IMAX screen, and I got some like a collectible card. I wasn't paying forty five dollars for a collectible card. I spent it was sixteen dollars for me. To go see it at the Midtown in, in Middletown, Delaware, which is a great movie theater. Um, and that was on the, I can't remember the name of the screen. It's not the IMAX. It's, I think it is like the IMAX, but it's like that, the XD. Okay. On the XD screen, and I got a free little mini poster, which is behind me right there. Uh, the deal, which is a re- limited print run poster. Still jealous about that, but of course I've got my Darth Vader lightsaber on the wall, so you know we're good. Yeah. And I have the uh, I have the, the, the Anakin Luke Ray saber. <laughs> that's bro- that that's that's broken half. Nobody cares. <laughs> All your. Well, 
speaking speaking of Infinity War, again, we're segueing again. We will get into later uh, later on in the show. We will get into a rant about well, not necessarily a rant, but our predictions of the big biggest movies that we're waiting for out of 2018. Obviously, we all pretty much let you know that Infinity War is the biggest one that we're waiting for. Uh, but there are some other superhero movies that I've either uh, gotten their first looks this week, uh, this week, or are dropping trailers uh, that we could talk discuss. Uh, first and foremost, Ant Man Wasp. Dropped the trailer today, wasn't it? Yes, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but yes, they did. All right, I I got a quick glance at it. I haven't actually watched the full trailer yet, but reactions to it that I've seen, a lot of people are saying it is absolutely phenomenal. The trailer is looking like it will uh, just dwarf uh, the original Ant Man movie. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the Ant Man, the original Ant Man, was one of those movies that. Kind of like you said with Han Solo, it was a movie that we never thought we wanted, but once it came out, it was just phenomenal. Um, in almost not quite in the vein of Guardians of the Galaxy, but kind of that, like, when you first hear, oh, Ant-Man? Really? And, but then Marvel did it again. And they, you're like, holy crap, they, they did it again. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, it was it, it should be fun, funny. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, just talking about Marvel too. That's not the only Colossus they've got dropping this year. Between that and Infinity War, they also have Deadpool two coming out as well. But before we even get in, one I can't wait for. Oh, absolutely. But uh, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, if Deadpool is phenomenal. Ant Man dropped a teaser trailer today, but it's not out in theaters yet. The one that's going to take the world by storm right now is the one that's getting absolutely bonker reviews, like phenomenally great reviews. The first look at Black Panther. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, we, me and my wife have already said that's our anniversary date. <laughs> the funny thing is, if you all remember back to last year when the first time, my first episode of Chance Geek Girl was... I actually brought, brought Matt Cruz onto the show, show and we reviewed and we, and we talked about the original, the first Black Panther trailer. trailer. And, and even then, I was pretty psyched for it. And you know something? That's something that has not burnt down at all. I'm still super psyched to see it. And I'm already working on plans to go see it. So, well, critic review wise, critic review wise, uh, uh, social event reviews all have been extremely positive. Eric, how, how, how fast are you going to be in line to be seeing uh, uh, Black Panther? I don't know why I brain farted that. <laughs> I, I plan on seeing it, but not just right away. I'll just wait because there's a place I can see it cheaper. So I'm going to wait for it to be out for a little bit. I'm not in a big rush to see it. I'm a, so, uh, i got to finish, you know, uh, the uh, Avengers, and that's the priority. <laughs> How have you not finished the Avengers yet? I wanted to see the last two. The last two. Whoa, 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 hold on. The la you haven't seen the last two? No. No, I understand what he's saying. He's waiting for the next two to come out. Yes. I got you. The last two. Because I'll, I'll tell you what. There was a... It was on last weekend, and I recorded, and all they show are movie trailers for 2018. And let me just tell you, I see Ant-Man's, you had Pacific Rim 2. Another one I'm very, very much looking forward to. Yes, and then you have and Finn's in it too. Mm -hmm. so, John Boyega, yes. Yeah. Like I said, they showed the Avengers, and like I said, I'm like, holy shit, I gotta get my money put aside now. That got taxis is coming around, right? Yeah. What do you yeah, spend your tax exactly. turn on? I'm gonna go see lots of movies. <laughs> Marvel's making a lot of money off of me. That is one thing I'm glad with my wife's job. She inevitably gets a ton of movie tickets. Like that's what she asks for. So she always gets so we can go to like a movie a month basically, and just so uh, yeah. So we got like a couple of theaters here, a uh, couple of towns I live in. So. Yeah, yeah, we, we got, got like fifty dollars over like fifty, sixty dollars worth of movie tickets to one theater, and then about eighteen movie tickets to another theater. So we're pretty much set for the year. 
I'm, I'm jealous. jealous. Yeah, right? Yeah. Send some my way. From here on out, all hosting duties for breaking the fourth wall will belong to John because he sees more movies than I do. <laughs> but, but yeah, like I said, um, yeah, Black, Black Panther, Panther is definitely going to be a Valentine's Day movie for me and my wife. wife. We've, we've already, already we've already said it. That's, um, uh, I mean, great casting. I think the casting for every, for every part that I've seen has just been fantastic. Hell of a, hell of a lot better uh, Valentine's Day present than I took Jen out on. Uh, we we went opening night, which was a Valentine's Day night to see Deadpool one. Phenomenal movie. We loved it, but I mean, That's not exactly. Right. Yeah, it's not really a date movie. <laughs> Happy Women's Liberation Day. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of Deadpool, I know Christina's chomping at the bit to talk about it. Yes. In 2018, this year, we are expected, besides, again, the domination of Marvel, which in turn is just the domination of Disney. And, of course, this big news that we haven't, I don't know if we have ever really ta talked about on Fourth Wall, the acquisition of Fox Studios by Disney, yeah. which Deadpool brings, is now a Disney yes, Deadpool is now a Disney princess, and Deadpool, really, really <laughs> again, Deadpool 1 completely traumatized Jen. Anytime, anytime, anytime we go to a store now, I could pick up a stuffed unicorn and just show it to her, and she just shivers from that scene, <laughs> from that one scene with the stuffed unicorn. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. Oh, come on, he's the only person I've ever seen refer to gators as masturbating slippers. Yes, <laughs> my comfy, my cover, my comfy rubber uh, masturbating shoes. Yes, <laughs> but yes, Deadpool two. Oh fuck that! <laughs> they can kiss. The no, was the uh, yes, they can kiss my twat. Guess, Guess what? what? I'm not editing this. So I don't care. care. I'm the one doing the video, so. <laughs> and I don't Those edit. I don't edit shit. <laughs> fuck it up. Fuck it up. But uh, no, the uh, the the, the Deadpool two is coming in 2018. If there's anything that's, I, I won't say will knock Avengers off its high horse, but I would say it's going to be the solid number three movie of the year. It's got to be Deadpool 2. I think it might be a solid number two. I think it might knock Solo out because of the controversy surrounding Solo. I think it's going to knock, it's going to hurt it in the long run, even with everything that's going on with it now. I think it's going to, I think Deadpool could topple it out for number two. Well, that's fair enough, and actually raises a uh, raises a really good question here. Do you think Deadpool two is going to be number two, and Solo is going to have issues not only because of the controversy of Solo, but the backlash and the 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 extreme hatred that Last Jedi has been generating is going to hurt Solo's. I think a lot of people are going to with Solo. They're going to wait, wait and, and see, see what, what the overall, overall reaction is, is. You, know, you know, to see how, you know, how, how everyone's going to react, how do the, how do the critics like it, how do, what are the initial, first initial reviews for it, before they go in, in and really, really go to see it. So I think there's going to be, it's, it's not going to be opening weekend, I don't think opening weekend is going to be like this mass rush of people to see it. I think you're going to see maybe a week before... Things, things really start, start to take, take off, off for it, depending, depending on, on how it is. Go ahead. Go ahead. First, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, John. All right. My, My thing, thing is this. Do we, we consider Solo to be an A-list movie? Or we think, think it be B-list? Like, that's like something we can wait for? for? Um, depends. If you're talking to a Star Wars fan, anything Star Wars is, is A-list. Oh, oh, yeah. But if you look at it in the... But if you if you look at it in the grand scheme of, of Star Wars stories, it it, it kind of really is a B list idea. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody needed an origin story as Han Solo. Is there going to be some interesting uh, attributes brought up in the film? I hope so. But reality, I was just as fine with the backstory I already knew of Han Solo. I didn't need the the movie to tell me anything more. Exactly. Exactly. Like, like I said before, I'm cautiously optimistic. 
you know, it's, you know, it's something, something that I'll go see, but, but it's not something like, like I don't have the same excitement even I felt with Rogue, Rogue One. Like, like Rogue, Rogue One, One, I was so, so excited, especially after seeing the trailers, trailers and seeing, seeing everything with going, going that was, was going to go into it. Just, just I, was I was so amped for it. Last, Last Jedi, Jedi, I was so pumped up for it. it. This one, I'm just kind of like, I'll go see it. You know, you know some I wouldn't be, I would probably, probably would be less, less excited for it if Ron Howard didn't, didn't take the helm on this last, yeah. last yeah. minute. That's and absolutely that's true. Ron Howard, and we know Ron Howard is a very extremely high caliber director. I mean, he brought us with. A lot of people forget that. So I have, I definitely have some hope that this basket case that was, you know, what, mid last year or end of last year was a complete basket case until Ron Howard actually was appointed. That this basket case can be stitched together and saved. Yeah. Well, if anybody could do it, it would definitely be Ron Howard. As you said, he did Willow. And, uh, you know, if anybody wants to question, if anybody wants to question the caliber of director he is, just remember Apollo 13. And he and, and like you like like like, like both of you said, said he did Willow, Willow, which means he knows George Lucas. He knows, he knows his, his thought process. process. He knows how he goes into movies. So well, he's he's he, he, he's known him before then. You, you can trace it all the way back to American Graffiti. Exactly. Yeah. Because he was in American Graffiti. If you think about it, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. So I that was Harrison Ford for that matter. Yes. Yeah. Which which means he also understands Harrison's mindset. Which tells me he would be able to uh, direct uh, Alden Ehrenreich. I, I, I always fuck up his name. The new Han Solo. And, and make sure that he gets the essence of the character of Han Solo correct. Correct. But enough about Star Wars. That we, ha we have three different fucking Star Wars One shows. Thing about Star Wars before we're done. Okay. Nobody calls Han Solo a bitch. Ah, fanboys. <laughs> uh, all right, so now we get into the part of the show. That's all the news I really came to the table with. So now we come to the part of the show where we just start talking about shit. I celebrated that. The, the, actor, the actor was pretty sad, but what, what was the purple Teletubby? Poe? Okay, Tinky Winky. Then, 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 okay, a baby's face on the sun was disturbing. Okay, them things were evil. That was almost as bad. I, actually, I, I got a poll for everybody. Here we go. We're, I got it. I got it. I got our rant section. You just gave me the rant section. Which was worse? The fucking Teletubbies or Yo Gabba Gabba with that fucking, <laughs> with that studded freaking woman's dildo dancing around with one eye? <laughs> I will make sure a picture shows up right here of what I'm talking about for the people that don't know. Which show was... I guess that's his name. I don't know. All I know is that thing was creepy as shit. And I can't decide which was worse. Yo Gabba Gabba or Teletubbies. Just Teletubbies. Yeah. Come on, you have to coach Teletubbies. Come on, let's not get back here. Like, ooh. You know that thing's like a cokehead. Um, you had Tinky Winky, the purple Teletubby carrying around a freaking purse with the baby son. That was just wrong. I kind of I appreciated it. My kids like Yo Gabba Gabba. My kids like freaking Teletubbies. So that that right there marks my answer. Can we just have a Eric? Can we just have a three-way death match? Can we have the Teletubbies versus Yo Gabba Gabba with the uh, special guest, uh, the special surprise guest being Barney? Special guest referee is Elmo. <laughs> oh, also, there's one more piece of news you need to get put out. Okay. You forget about our very important change.org petition you put out. Oh, uh, yes. That's right. Guys, go on Facebook or change.org. 
Look up my petition. We must stop these p evil, evil people of the world. I'm asking for signatures. We need to prove to people that they are wrong in every sense of the word. Pineapple does belong on pizza. Anybody who says it doesn't worship Satan belongs to that uh, fucking church in Colorado that protests soldiers' fucking funerals. I don't remember their name. Thank you, Westboro Pap. They're 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 a group. They're a group of them hate mongers. I will. I will. I will try to have the uh, the, the petition. Oh. Oh. We did discuss it, but we didn't discuss it on fourth wall, so we could discuss. No, no, no. Ursula K. Lee Le Guin, she was an author. She wrote fantasy. Okay. She's fairly well known. I've never, never heard of her. She's. She's. I guess I never. She wrote the Earth Sea series. Um, I actually, I remember, I remember the only reason, reason, honestly, the one reason I actually know, know her was when, when I was in high school. That was one of my mandatory reading assignments. Was I had to read a Wizard of Earth because, you know, my school rocked that badly, and I got good books to read. <laughs> you know, I, I got to read fantasy and stuff like that, while everyone else had to read, like... Where the Red Fern grows. Yeah, or Things That They Carry. That was actually a good book. It was a good book. I just It's the one book I remember being forced to read in school. Um, Scarlet Letter, or... Yeah. Pride and Prejudice. War and Peace. Oh, oh yeah, 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 there wasn't, wasn't a, that wasn't a big fuck you. Here, yeah, read War and Peace. By the way, next week. Oh, yeah, they, get, they give you like a month to read a book that's thicker than your like, phone book. <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen a copy of War and Peace, like a real copy of War and Peace? This thing is like, it had to be what, eight inches thick, nine inches thick? Look, the instruction, man the instruction manual to understand women is thinner than fucking War and Peace. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. But uh, I, I guess I just never read any of her books. I, I don't know anything about her. I, yeah, I, she's, she's actually a pretty, pretty good, good author. author. I mean, she, she had a slightly different, different approach to how she, how she wrote, wrote, but like I guess I, I enjoyed, enjoyed Wizard of Mercy. Um, I'm probably gonna, I've, I've actually been looking out as I've been parading because, you know, bookstores just don't exist anymore. Unless you go to Barnes & Noble. Yeah, yeah, you know what a close to Barnes & Noble to me is? about 100 miles away. I have, you know what I have? I get the order online. Or I go to, oh, what I usually do is go to Goodwill, and some to Goodwill, I hope I find something good, like 2010 State uh, Odyssey 2 I found the other day. Which was, was like, that's my... <laughs> yeah. But I paid $2 for it. Yeah, yeah, we were we were having a mind's cooler the other day because she got that book and she got a couple uh, wall hangs and stuff like that. And then I pulled out the uh, I found the Power of the Force figures of Darth Vader and Nine Nub. <laughs> it was cool. I'm not I'm not dogging. But uh, long and long and short of it, long and short of it, we're we're getting way off track here. <laughs> okay, why would this be any different than the other show? Because this is fourth wall and I try to have it semi professional. <laughs> My eyes are green, thank you very little, and you're welcome even less. <laughs> but let's get in. Yeah. Mr. Hanky song. Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo. Uh, but getting. Movies of 2018. What are we most looking forward to? Avengers. Definitely Avengers. 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 I'm looking forward to Avengers, Black Panther, Deadpool 2, Solo. And also Battle Angel Alita. Um, those are definitely the five which 
Ed Jurassic, Jurassic and the new Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Which I'm not sure if that's coming out this year or next year. Next year. Well, actually, I think it might be this year. I think, I think that's, that's coming out this year, year but it was like the end of this year. But that I'm also looking forward to, too, because I saw the, uh, I have seen the trailer for that, and I was kind of, I have a couple questions, but I definitely want to see it. Like, like during one of those pods, like from the first one again, and the one 